Hey everyone, this is Joe from Pantilio Switch Shop, and in this video, we're gonna be unboxing and setting up my new Grizzly 8 inch joiner. I do wanna note real quick that there's shipping damage, but it was noted with a freight company, and it does look superficial. So hopefully everything is intact inside. Okay, here it is. Removing it from the pallet was pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna be removing this plastic film and then I'll be using WD-40 to clean off the cast iron surfaces. Alright, first thing I want to do before I even plug this in is to make sure that the tables are actually flat. Right here I have a Veritas 36 inch precision straight edge. I believe it's true to about 15 ten thousandths from one end to the other. So I'm going to lay this across this table right here and I'm going to use a feeler gauge and figure out if there is a dip on this table. So actually, <clears throat> I can see a little bit of light on here and this is at four thousandths. But it's weird because when I place it across like that, there is no dip as well as if I do it straight like this, no visible dip, and the 4000 does not go through. And I'm gonna move it up here to the front, and I don't see a dip as well. But I will call that good. I'm gonna go ahead and check the in-feed in side, because this is the outfeed side, and uh, I will take a video if I have a problem on that side. I checked the infeed table side with this uh, persistent straight edge, and everything was great on that one. So now I'm gonna make sure that this table is in the same plane as my cutter head, like throughout the whole length. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this locking lever, and then I'm gonna bring the table down slowly until this precision straight edge is touching the body of the cutter head. It's just the body of the cutter head and not the knife. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit more. And I'm gonna grab my feeler gauge. That looks actually pretty great. So I'm gonna lock this in. I'm gonna move forward and see there's a little bit of space on here. Check the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to adjust that part. All right, in order to gain access to the eccentric nuts, we would need to remove this cover 
and pull out these two plugs as there are nuts inside this panel as well so that we can take the whole front cover off. Remove the plastic plugs. I'm just going to use a combination of a scribe, go, and flathead. Just try to be careful. It's a different size for Allen head. Go. Off. It's going to be fun putting this back together. And as you can see, the, here are the eccentric bushings you need to adjust. To be able to adjust the height of your table, you're going to need to loosen up the set screw that is on the side of the, uh, not the eccentric nut, but the bracket that holds the eccentric nut. Loosen it up. I think this is a two and a half mil Allen that I'm using and now you can turn your eccentric nut and it looks like turning it clockwise moves the table up but we need to we need it to go down so i'm going to turn it counterclockwise just a little bit and while i'm doing this i'm using a filler gauge between the straight edge and the cutter head to make sure I get contact there. A little bit more. All right, that's perfect. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and tighten up the set screw. By the way, the concentric nut size is 15 16 or if you don't have a combo wrench, you can uh, slide a small adjustable in there. So after adjusting the parallel on the front side of the outfeed table to the cutter head, it raised the back side as well. So actually on here, on the manual, I adjusted this and this raised up. So all you have to do is go back so the back, there's gonna be a cover in here, and same thing as the front. There's two plastic plugs. Inside the plastic plugs, there are two Allen head screws. Just remove that, and the cutter head, or actually the eccentric nut that I had to adjust is in here. All right, I think she's adjusted. After locking everything down, I'm gonna make sure to double check to make sure nothing changed after I locked the set screws down. So I'm gonna start up here. St um, straight edge against the cutter head, looks good. I'm gonna run my feeler gauge. Looks good. I'm gonna go to the front of my outfeed table. Again, same thing. That's good. Run it across. Good. Then I'm gonna go diagonal. Uh, it's a little bit there, but that's fine. It's wood, wood moves. It's good. Here. All right, I am happy with that. 
Now I am, since my outfeed table is adjusted, I'm gonna adjust the infeed side using the outfeed. So I went ahead and clamped my straight edge to the outfeed table as you know, if there's any difference in height, because it's a straight edge, it's just gonna lean towards the weight that's gonna be on this side. So I went ahead and clamped this, and as you can uh, visually see, there is a lot of gap there. Now that's not a bad thing, because I have not adjusted the infeed table height yet. So in order to do that, I'm gonna unlock it, I'm gonna raise this up slowly until it touches that straight edge. That feels good. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this. Right, once that's locked, I'm gonna grab my feeler gauge. And I'm gonna run this feeler, gra feeler gauge across my infeed table. And that is pretty solid. Take the clamp off. Let's switch to the other side. And then do the same thing. Diagonally. And this way. I think that will do. Now that we have verified both our infeed and outfeed table are parallel to each other, the next step we have to do is we're gonna have to set the outfeed table height. And that requires you to move your cutter head so that the knife is gonna be at top dead center. So just like when we're adjusting the infeed and outfeed table, we're gonna to have to unlock the locking lever. And I'm gonna slowly raise my outfeed table. like so. And a good test to make sure these are parallel is you push your cutter head, you reset it. Be very careful when doing this. On the manual it says to remove the back access cover and rotate the cutter head that way. But as long as you're being careful, you should be able to do this, no problem. And drag your cutter head like that. It should grab on to your straight edge and carry it for a little bit, like how you see it here. To me, that is perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this on the back to make sure I get about the same movement. All right, I'm gonna rotate my cutter head. And there's that movement we're looking for. Back it up a bit. Rotate it. And there we go. Don't forget to lock the table so it doesn't move on you when you're cutting. All right, after working on the outfeed and the infeed table, I lowered the infeed table to 130 seconds because that's how much I want to take off per pass. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust my fence. So right now I'm just going to concentrate on the 90 from my, my tables to the fence. In order to do that, 
you have this lever to unlock it and then you have this jam knot that you would have to turn counterclockwise so you can use an allen wrench and adjust the, <clears throat> the fence either the top this way or the bottom that way so that you can get your perfect 90. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick. Actually, I did most of it already. I'm just confirming it right now. It looks very good. And after you get it adjusted, you wanna lock your jam knot right here, but hold your Allen wrench and provide a counter for so while you'll you're turning, you're turning clockwise on this wrench, you wanna hold the Allen wrench the opposite way to provide that opposite pressure. Once that's locked, go ahead and lock the locking lever and then check your 90. bad uh, take your time with adjusting the out feed and the in feed table so that you don't ever have to adjust again maybe check it you know every couple of years but after the initial adjustment it should be solid uh, thanks for watching my video if you guys have any questions uh, please let me know bye